what worries me more is that BPC-157 appears to be angiogenic, meaning it grows blood vessels and that can be great or it can be problematic depending on what those vessels are feeding. Um, I'm not saying BPC-157 is bad. I'm just saying this is my kind of caution about it and I hope to and I will have um, I was taking, I have a calf injury on one leg that is due to some nerve damage from a skateboarding injury, repeated skateboarding injury years ago. I was trying to bring that back. Um, and actually it's amazing. I, I was injecting it directly into the calf for a couple of weeks and I actually found I could, um, and, and longer actually, it was a couple of months by the time I finished because I was doing it infrequently. And I found I actually was able to um, finally contract that calf meaningfully um, while running and through weight workouts in a way that brought some of it back, but it was it was pretty badly atrophied. Um, but I've been doing other things to try and get the tissue generating again, or I should say the neural activation of, of that calf. It's it's not a structural issue that I was born with. It's, it's injury induced um, and it feels much better, but I'm currently not taking BPC-157 and I'm worried about prolonged use. That's my concern prolonged use. But, um, and then some of the other peptides like sermorelin, tesamorelin, the um, so-called growth hormone secretagogues that stimulate growth hormone release.